Chris Graham. Welcome to Street Knowledge. I am Chris Graham, and I'm a bit under the weather today. I'm going to try to soldier through this uh, this UVA Georgia Tech football preview. Saturday at 3 o'clock, the Cavs will entertain the Yellow Jackets in a, uh, a key game, obviously, for both teams. Uh, and those of us listening to this podcast, very important for Virginia football. Virginia on a two-game losing streak after that 5-1 and one start. and Really not looking good the last couple of weeks. Uh, 31-14 loss this most recent weekend at Pitt. In a game that if you looked at the stats and didn't look at the score, you'd say, man, that game was probably close and Virginia could have won it. Virginia actually outgained Pitt slightly. Had more first downs. Just couldn't convert third and short and fourth and short. Third and one and fourth and one plays. Virginia had five rushing attempts. Did not gain a yard on any of them. In a game that, uh, well, they you know, missed a field goal, turned the ball over on downs twice inside of the 10-yard line, uh, and then another time um, around the 30-yard line of, of, of Pitt. So scoring drives snuffed out, whereas whereas Pitt, they finished their drives out. And uh, you finish your drives out and your opponent doesn't, you tend to win the games. And that's what happened with uh, the game on Saturday. So Virginia comes into the game with a 5-3 and three record. Now Georgia Tech comes in 4-3, and 3-2 three, three and two in the ACC, but that's deceptive. Those st- you know, you'd think, well, Virginia's got a better record, right? Georgia Tech, uh, now the, the loss in week one to Tennessee is, doesn't look so good now, right? It was a 42-41 loss. I think it was a double overtime game. I think t- Georgia Tech, if I remember that one correctly, uh, led most of the way. In fact, I think they led of all, all of regulation until the last minute. Tennessee came back, tied it, sent it to overtime. Uh, the only time Tennessee led was in the second overtime of that game. And Georgia Tech, if I re- and, and I'm sure I recall this correctly, had the ball second in the uh, over- second overtime session, scored a touchdown, went for two, didn't get it. So they lost the game. Uh, the way Tennessee's season has unraveled since, <laughs> that one doesn't look so good for, for Georgia Tech. But then the, the one-point loss to Miami in that driving rainstorm, and then last weekend losing 24-10 to Clemson. So, you know, this Georgia Tech team is favored. I think 8.5 is the margin on the road in Charlottesville. Uh, you know, yeah, I think that's fair. The way Virginia's played of late, uh, the, the 31-14 loss to Pitt and that the still the bad taste of the 41-10 beatdown to Boston College lingers. But then again, Boston College beat the heck out of Florida State last Friday night, 35-3 win up in Chestnut Hill. So, Maybe not quite as bad, right, as it could have been. But that said, you know, Virginia, uh, we're we're out here, us fans. I can count myself as a fan. I'm an analyst too, but I'm a fan. Try to be fair, also try to be harsh. But we're five and three. We're looking for six. We haven't been to a bowl game since 2011, and uh, we've seen a team have a, a a a chance to play for bowls. Once in that period of time, that was the the five and seven team of 2014. It started four and two, finished five and seven by losing five of the last six, including a that, that heartbreaking loss down in Blacksburg, uh, a game that Virginia led in the final couple of minutes, and then Virginia Tech scored late. Virginia actually, I, I was in in Brooklyn uh, watching the basketball team in a in a holiday tournament. Uh, that game uh, was going on as the Cavs were playing basketball that night, so I uh, didn't get to watch it closely. But I was in the um, the media room next door to the where where the basketball team was assembled after winning that that first game of that that two day tournament, and uh, they were watching the game because you might remember Matt John scored on a, a a long play that was called back by a touchdown with like 30 seconds left. Uh, I was watching on an iPad in the media room, waiting for the waiting for Coach Bennett and the players to come out to talk. I was one of like two, three reporters in the <laughs> in the whole Brooklyn in the Barclay Center, and uh, they erupted a few seconds before uh, I saw the play on my iPad because you know they they were watching it on TV. I was watching it on ESPN three, so there's a little bit of a delay there, but. They were following along, and uh, a lot of us thought that that might have been that that would have been the sixth win. That team would have gone to a bowl. Heck, we're probably talking about Coach Mike London now, not Coach Bronco Mendenhall, if that team does make that bowl that year. And so uh, we've we've been close, but close doesn't get it done, right? I mean, you know, it's not like uh, going to the Armed Forces Bowl or the Pinstripe Bowl or whatever you know low tier ACC game we might get with a six win season. 
uh, is going to, um, you know, start us down the road towards a playoff berth in a couple of years. But hey, bowl's a bowl. And uh, when you start five and one, you you know, you, you want to get that six win. Now this Virginia team plays, of course, this you know, the the BC and Pitt losses were were most particularly dispiriting because they at least on paper look like winnable games against teams that themselves were, you know, below 500 at the time. These last four, uh, Virginia plays teams with a combined record of 23-8. and eight. Now, the bulk of that over 500 is Miami and Virginia Tech, who played this weekend. Uh, Miami at 7-0, and uh, number 9 in the country. Uh, Virginia Tech 7-1, and one, number 13 in the country. Their one loss to Clemson, uh, number 6 in the country. Uh, but this again, this Georgia Tech team at four and three next week at Louisville. Louisville is five and four. Then you finish up at Miami and then Virginia Tech at home. Um, coincidentally, I'll be in Brooklyn for that. I'll actually miss the Black Friday game. I'm gonna. I plan to be in Brooklyn to watch the basketball team again. That's that's what happens when you uh, follow Virginia basketball as closely as we do. Uh, you have to make some choices during that season and. You know, I think the basketball team's got some promise this year, and the football team will leave the, the coverage of that game in the able hands of Scott German and Jeff Fife. That's way down the road, though. Let's talk some Georgia Tech. This Georgia Tech team uh, mentioned 4-3 and three record. I mentioned the losses. Uh, you know, they're not surprisingly, this Georgia Tech team is a team that runs the ball a lot. They're the triple option attack. Paul Johnson brought that in many years ago when he came to be the coach there. 347.9 rushing yards per game for the Yellow Jackets, 5.7 per attempt. And um, quarterback uh, Taquan Marshall uh, actually is, is you know, he leads the way. Uh, he, he's second on the team in rushing, technically, 727 yards. That includes some sack yardage. Uh, he's actually gained over 830 yards uh, this season, but some sack yardage taking him back to be a close second overall in rushing, but he has 12 rushing touchdowns. And... Uh, He's also thrown for 488 yards and five touchdowns. And, you know, what's interesting, you, you know, those – you watch Georgia Tech, you watch a team with a triple option, uh, and we've seen this team play for a number of years. They've had some great – you know, Demarius Thomas, uh, Calvin Johnson, uh, uh, wide receivers who've thrived in that offense, come, uh, come out of that system, I should say, and have, have done well in the NFL. Uh, they don't throw much. Uh, Marshall has only thrown the ball this year 64 times in seven games, about nine attempts per game. Uh, but uh, when he does, uh, he's got a, a, another big receiver uh, in the form of Ricky June, who averages 16.7 yards catch. Actually has 17 of the 30 receptions uh, by Georgia Tech receivers this year. So, you know, what happens is uh, this team will run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and you've got to do everything differently. You know, you've got to uh, actually have someone account for the for the uh, the quarterback in the running game, uh, whereas, you know, in most, most situations uh, outside of teams who run the read option, you know, a more pass-based offense that's still where the quarterback can sometimes, out of a shotgun, either hand the ball off to a running back or keep and, and run around the edge. Uh, you've got to actually keep someone in to, to watch the, the quarterback, uh, a linebacker as a spy. Uh, and uh, you've got to be disciplined on the edges. You know, your your outside line. And in Virginia's 3-4 defense is actually – it's actually an off, a defense that is uh, ideally situated to play against the triple threat, a triple option attack because, uh, you know, you have those extra backers on the outside. You know, you've got three down linemen, and then you've got those – you know, th th they're complemented on their edges by, by the – uh, by outside linebackers, and so uh, you know you do have extra help out there. F the four-three defense is is a little more vulnerable, uh, actually a lot more vulnerable to the to the triple option. Um, but uh, yeah, you got to account for things differently. So uh, what happens with their passing game is you know you get everybody's eyes creeping into the backfield, see all that stuff going on, all the ball handling going on with the quarterback. Does he keep? Does he? Uh, does he hand? Does he you know the dive? Uh, does he keep and then? Uh, keep himself and, and run around the line. Does he does he keep and then pitch? Uh, sometimes they'll run uh, one of the H backs in sort of a reverse action, so you have to account for the for the pitch man going the opposite direction. You're doing all that stuff, and then they send that receiver behind you. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. They've only completed 30 passes in seven games, so they're averaging four completions a game. But when they do, they're effective, uh, and so you gotta you gotta be careful. You gotta, you know, is, that's and that's what can make their running game more effective. If you're if you're Quinn Blanding back there at free safety, you've got to you know you gotta you gotta account for those 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 deep guys. Uh, 
and if you do that, if you're if you're overprotective of your of your back flank, then you you know you're you're not up there flying the ball, making the tackle. So yeah, it's 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 you know. It's uh, three or four yards in a cloud of dust. Actually, for them, it's 5.7 yards in a cloud of dust with what they average on the season. But it's uh, it's an offense that uh, obviously works. Uh, and, and you know, in spite of the detractors, saying I would be included in that group, saying, "Wow, well, once you know teams get some game tape on this guy, it's, it's you know the mystique's gonna be rubbed off, uh, and you know you'll figure out how to play against it." The problem is. You know, if you're Bronco Mendenhall, for example, no, no matter who you are in the ACC that plays these guys every year, 11 weeks out of the 12, you play differently. You, even if you're playing a read option team, you still, you know, you still play differently. Most most teams throw the ball at least 50, you know, 45, 50 percent of the time. A lot of teams in this day and age throw it a lot more than that. Uh, and so you you dial things up. You know, when you play against a team that runs the ball 80, 85 percent of their snaps. Uh, and runs it the way Georgia Tech does, uh, you have to – sometimes, you know, you see teams actually uh, will, will change their personnel for that one week. You know, you might – you know, you might uh, – your, your pass rushing defensive ends, maybe, you know, you put some bulkier guys down in their place or, you know, t- say at least take some of their snaps away uh, and, and give guys uh, – uh, you know, get some of your better guys off the field to get guys who are more effective against this kind of offense on the field. And uh, you know you're you're changing things up for that one week. Even if you've got muscle memory from last year, two years ago, etc., they do what they do, 52 weeks a year. I mean, you know, when in the off season, those guys are thinking about, you know, their their triple option attack. The linemen block so differently. The 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 ball handling in the backfield so different. And uh, and you got one week. Even if you do spend some time in the summer. Uh, trying to get ready for that game you know in Virginia's case it's week 10 now you're playing them so uh it's tough it's 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 tough in that respect now that said Virginia last year lost the game at Georgia Tech the final score of that game 31-17 but it wasn't the the defense that was the uh the issue in that game Virginia in, in that game last year actually played pretty well uh defensively uh Georgia Tech only had 321 yards of offense 199 on the ground the reason Virginia lost that game last year, Virginia offensively gained 405 yards but had three turnovers. Uh, Matt Johns, for some reason, was the quarterback in that game. You might remember Kurt Banker started the first nine games last season and then all of a sudden decision made from high to uh, make a change uh, to the fifth-year senior who had no future at Virginia, uh, who maybe would have been a better starter from week one, but by week 10 it didn't make a lot of sense to put him out there and John's moved the team, but was a little sloppy with the ball, probably justifying why Bankard got the job to start the season in the first place. Uh, but so Virginia, you know, the three interceptions, uh, Virginia actually led that game at halftime 10-7 and, and, uh, and uh, you know, literally uh, fumbled it away, so to speak, <laughs> interceptioned it away uh, with, with the turnovers uh, helping key Georgia Tech's uh, pull, uh, come from behind, pull away win. Uh, in that game, but again, defensively, Virginia did well uh, last year. So there is some positive muscle memory for the uh, for the for the Hoos uh, defensively uh, going into this game. Um, you know, a key for Virginia. That's the, so the one key will be <laughs> obviously, and I'm not being a genius here when I say key defensively stop the run. Right? Uh, what Georgia Tech does so well. I mean, you know, you know they're going to run the ball 80 to 85 percent of the time. Uh, they they run on first down they gain three yards they they run on second down they gain three four yards it's still it's now third and three third and four they're gonna probably run on third down you know they they the the passing opportunities really aren't as much tied to the down and distance as they are to you know when they try to catch a napping uh, this is not a team that really you know they're not scared by third and eight they'll still run the ball in third and eight they're, they'll still run the ball in third and twelve. Uh, Paul Johnson is not afraid to do that. He's he's proven to, you know, he'll he'll pick up as many of those as you will throw in the ball. Um, so, but but offensively, so as a result, they they often are playing ahead of the chains, as we say in you know the idiom of football. Um, and uh, they convert. They're they're leading. Is it leading the ACC? I I I just finished these stats. Um, just finished, uh, you know, doing my game preview here, and and this I want to check myself. Leading the ACC in third down conversions offensively, forty six point six percent. Not surprised, because a team again that, you know, a, a lot of teams if you're if you're that more conventional attack and 
you can run or pass on first down, and often do. You know, if you happen to inco- have an incomplete pass on first down, you you know think about wh- how you watch football. If you if if the team is facing second to ten after an incomplete pass, you, you often see teams run the ball on second down because even if you gain two or three yards, third and seven, third and eight is better than third and ten, right? So. Uh, they don't find themselves in that position very often. They don't have a lot of negative yardage plays running the ball, uh, this team. So, uh, you know, they're ahead of the chains. And when it's third and short, they convert. And uh, that's that's how that offense works. It's boring. It's 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 sort of like, you know, you, you're a Virginia fan listening to this podcast. It's sort of like our defense in basketball. Pack line defense, yeah, boring. Uh, the, mover, the mover blocker offense, yeah, boring. Very effective because no one else plays it. Uh, and 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 as a result, uh, you know you're you trying to prepare a game plan against a Virginia team. You've um, you've played a, a certain way the rest of the season. You play Virginia once or twice a season at most, and uh, it's tough to adjust. So uh, same thing for Georgia Tech, and um, uh, they're very effective, uh, and also defensively on third downs actually too. So the the Georgia Tech defense now this has been a, a sticking point for this this program over the years remember famously after Al Grill got fired at Virginia he was hired to be the defensive coordinator at Georgia Tech that didn't work out so well but Paul Johnson um he calls the plays himself on offense he's 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 effectively a a head coach slash offensive coordinator and uh he's he's always had the trouble figuring out the defense well this team's four and three with an offense that you know the the running game is doing what it's doing and the defense is is actually Playing very well too for the you know for the first time in a long time, uh, third best in the ACC, averaging th- allowing opponents 330.1 yards a game, and uh, and also you know being uh, very successful on third down. They're actually third best in the ACC on uh, in, in preventing third down conversions. Just 27.9 percent uh, of third down conversions converted against them this year. So it's a defense that gets off the field. And uh, it, one thing it doesn't do, though, is cause turnovers. It's actually 12th in the ACC, only eight turnovers forced this year by the Georgia Tech defense. It'll stop you. They just won't turn you over. And so, uh, you know, so keys to the game again. Virginia, stop the run. There we go. That's my genius right there. At least you, you're not going to stop the run, but slow down the run. Put them in some passing situations. Uh, you know, mentioned that this year they're only, they're only attempting nine passes a game, and they're averaging actually – Quick math, I might had 69 yards passing a game. Last year in that win over Virginia, Virginia, because the Cavs were able to force Virginia uh, to Georgia Tech, you know, holding them to 199 on the ground, Georgia Tech actually had to throw the ball uh, more than they would like, th- threw for 122. If, uh, if you see some sort of similar ratio in the final stats after this game on Saturday, that's probably reflective of Virginia being successful defensively. If they can force Georgia Tech to throw the ball more, to try to be successful throwing the ball more, that's because Virginia will have done what it needed to do uh, against the run, and uh, that's going to be one key. The other key for Virginia is just going to be getting the swagger back on offense. Uh, this Virginia team has only averaged 280.5 yards per game offensively its last two games. After averaging, you know, the, in that four-game winning streak, the wins over Connecticut and, and Boise State and um, – the first two ACC games, UNC and Duke, or Duke and UNC in, in the correct order, Virginia averaged 445.3 yards per game in that stretch offensively. So from 445.3 to 280.5. Now, part of that, you know, you, get, you got fell behind against Boston College and um, I guess uh, started trying to throw the ball more than because you fell behind. Those two big touchdowns, uh, the, the, the two long touchdowns in the first quarter put the Cavs behind the eight ball. Early in that game, and, and I, I'd say admittedly, uh, I, I, I bet Co- Coach Robert Ane would, would admit that he got out of his game plan uh, a little too soon in that game. Well, 17 nothing in the first quarter, you still you still stick to your game plan. They didn't. They they, they started chucking the ball and didn't work. Uh, but in that four-game winning streak, Virginia actually ran the ball a little more. It was like a 52-48 ratio of, of run to pass in that four-game winning streak. In the last two, though, Virginia has, has passed on 84 84- of 141 snaps, so it's about a, a close to a 60-40 ratio pass to run in the two-game losing streak, and uh, uh, the running game's only uh, has gained 98.5 yards a game the last two after gaining 155.5 during the four-game winning streak, uh, and what that's done too is you know you're you're back there chucking the ball more. Uh, Kurt Binker during the winning streak was a 65% completion passer, 
Uh, the passing game in the last two weeks, 48.8%. Four, four interceptions, two by Binkert, two by his backup, Lendell Stone. But uh, you can see, you know, Virginia's gotten out of whack offensively. They're throwing the ball too much, not running the ball well, uh, and, the, and, and relying on the passing game has, has uh, led to a lack of efficiency uh, on both sides, uh, both the running and passing game. So you're going to need to establish a run early, Obviously, I mean, I say obviously, it's I'm probably not speaking rocket science here. You're going to need to run early. You're going to need to get some, you know, positive yardage on first and second down. Set up some third and medium, third and shorts. And uh, and then when you do get those opportunities, I mentioned the, the five runs on third and fourth and one last week, none of which gained a yard. If you get a third and one, get a fourth and one, you're going to have to gain some, you know, obviously convert some of those. And, you know, this, this is quibbling now, and I'm not a – college football coach to say the least but you know the play calling last week uh, on those third and fourth and one plays was was not imaginative uh running straight into the line you know not taking advantage of whatever speed you may have on the perimeter um you know so so you know some 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 switching up needs to be done in the play calling a little bit too but uh, you know, bottom line, you know, you know, in third and fourth and one, you need to just be able to blow the other team off the ball in Virginia. Not able to do that last week, and that was that was a big factor uh, in the, in that loss last week, particularly. So, so um, yeah, the game's at three o'clock on Saturday, and uh, so a later start than we're used to. We're used to lately. We've been playing those twelve and twelve thirty games, and so three o'clock start. Augusta Free Press will have a live blog. I'm not sure who's going to be joining me quite yet. Scott German still. Uh, a beach bum down in the Outer Banks, so uh, he won't be joining us. I'm trying to talk Jeff Fife into uh, giving up some evening plans, perhaps, and, and sticking around with me to to uh, join me on the uh, the, the broadcast, the podcast, everything else after the game. Live blog during, uh, podcast after, uh, of course, all the game analysis, etc. You can imagine and more. Uh, into the wee hours of Sunday morning, I am sure, uh, after... Virginia Georgia Tech, uh, and so please join us. We'll be on the live blog on the website at press dot com, but also you can follow me on Twitter at Aug Free Press, A U G Free Press, and um, you know I'll try to hashtag at UVA in case you'd forget, and you can find me that way too. Uh, but anyway, there's uh, you know it's, I think you know I'll talk more. I guess I'll give my thoughts on a prediction later this week, but. You know, I, I can see why Vegas would, would, would give Georgia Tech uh, a big cushion in the betting odds. But I think this game is if, – if Virginia can get back on track, especially offensively, I think that I think defensively Bronco Mendenhall had a, a pretty good game plan last year. I think he'll, he knows how to game plan against this kind of a, an offensive attack. Uh, the key to this game for Virginia is going to be probably that first drive or two offensively. You know, last week we saw the, 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 that first drive at Pitt – get past midfield, had a third and five play. Kurt Binkert was intercepted. Really, it's kind of like when a pitcher gives up a home run in the first inning um, on on his slider, you know, and, and decides not to use a slider anymore. You know, Virginia, for the next few series, uh, it seemed like Robert Anae and, uh, and Kurt Binkert were just a little reluctant. Anae was reluctant to call s- certain plays, and, and Binkert was reluctant to pull the trigger on certain plays. And and, and, you know, that, that was a sequence. Those first three drives, Virginia got past midfield on each, the, the long kickoff return included, and you just couldn't you, you couldn't convert when you needed to because you didn't have the full playbook in front of you. By the time you know, Virginia had worked through those confidence issues, it was kind of too late. So those first couple of drives for Virginia were very key. Uh, defense not giving up some, some easy, easy big yardage plays will be very key. And uh, I think it's a game Virginia can win. I know that the, the fan base is a little down right now uh, for lots of reasons, probably a lot of good reasons. You know, you you know, you know, go f- through that four-game winning streak, you're on the verge of the top 25, and then you have two just heart-wrenching, heart-stomach-kick-punch, whatever, losses. I think, I think this team still has a, a shot to win a couple more games this year. And I, I keep prefacing when I say that uh, – I'm the guy who thought this team would win one or two games this year. So I think there's still one or two more wins out there for this team. Not giving up hope quite yet. Thank you for joining us on the podcast, and uh, we will talk again soon.